During the Second World War, not even the depths of the ocean are at peace. U.S. Navy submarines patrol the vast Pacific Ocean during four years of fighting, from 1941 to 1945. Their commanders are often young, daring risk takers, like Richard O'Kane. He was a 1934 graduate of the United States Naval Academy. At the age of 32, he gained command of the submarine USS Tang. Now, he is on his 10th patrol in the Pacific, and his fifth on the Tang. On the night of October 10th, 1944, O'Kane spots two cargo ships off the northwest coast of Taiwan. He surfaces, fires torpedoes, and sinks them both. The Tang dives back into enemy waters, out of sight. Hail to the Navy! Hail to the ships and men who fight America's battles on the seven seas. During the Second World War, U.S. submarines had many missions but their primary role was to prowl Japanese sea lanes looking for ships to sink. American Gato and Baleo-class submarines carried 24 torpedoes, and their decks included a variety of guns. Japan's economy and military were dependent upon the seas to move men and material to distant bases and back to the home islands. American submarines sought to exploit this vulnerability. This was dangerous work. Submerged too deep, and the water pressure could crush your hull. Uncharted underwater reefs and obstacles loom everywhere. You could be rammed from above. Death could come from fast-moving destroyers armed with depth charges. Aircraft with bombs. It was so dangerous that nearly all on board were volunteers. As the war progresses, the Japanese take steps to protect their supply lines. U.S. submarines must go further behind enemy lines to find targets. By late October 1944, O'Kane and the men of the USS Tang have spent two weeks patrolling the waters of the Taiwan Strait, but have found no enemy targets. O'Kane ventures further north. The hunch proves correct they spot a large protected convoy. O'Kane looks for an opportunity to get closer. Then, a destroyer escort accompanying the convoy begins a circular patrol. A gap opens. O'Kane sails into the convoy, concealed by the darkness of night. The ships execute a zigzag maneuver, designed to foil enemy torpedoes. Instead, they turn directly in front of Tang's forward torpedoes. The Tang's Mark 18 torpedoes strike one freighter amidships. A second is hit at the stern, a third at the engine room. As Tang aims four stern torpedoes at a tanker, a transport bears down, intending to ram. O'Kane closes the distance, gives a hard rudder to clear the stern. The transport collides with the tanker. O'Kane fires four torpedoes into the vessel. Chaos erupts. The destroyer escort flees. Tang slips away. Nearby in the Philippines, the Japanese Navy has mobilized close to all of its remaining vessels in an attempt to stem the Allied advance in the Pacific. While the Battle of Leyte Gulf rages, the USS Tang patrols due north near Niushan Island. On the night of October 24th, their search radar lights up. A convoy travels along the rugged, shallow coastal waters on the way to reinforce the Japanese Navy in the Philippines. Tang is almost out of torpedoes, just enough for one more attack. Lookouts aboard the deck can see the enemy ships packed with cargo. They must be stopped. They fire upon a tanker, a hit, a nearby destroyer escort blows up too. 
A troop transport stops dead in the water. Tang has two torpedoes left. Two left. And then they can finally go home. O'Kane gives the order. The first torpedo bolts true, bearing down on the crippled ship. But the final torpedo malfunctions and turns back towards the Tang. It's a circular run. Their final torpedo is now headed straight for them. There's no time to evade. They are struck at the stern. On the cusp of victory, catastrophe. In the beginning of 1945, the Allies are rapidly gaining ground in the Pacific, while the US Navy persists in strangling Japanese supply lines. It's been three months since O'Kane's sub was lost off the coast of Taiwan. Commander Eugene Flucky surveys the waters of the Taiwan Strait. Like O'Kane, Flucky was a graduate of the United States Naval Academy. Now he and the crew of the USS Barb are in their fourth year of combat. His reputation for finding targets has earned him the nickname Lucky Flucky. Naval intelligence indicates a Japanese convoy will pass through the Taiwan Strait. The Barb, joined by two other submarines, sets out to investigate. Their initiative pays off. They discover nine freighters and tankers. The trio opens fire, sinking or damaging every single one. Then, nothing. Traffic in the sea lanes dries up. Flucky believes Japan's ships may be staying closer to shore, where it is too shallow for subs to penetrate. He leaves his companion subs behind, going deeper behind enemy lines. Arriving just outside of Nam Quan Harbor, Flucky decides to explore further. Radar confirms Flucky's suspicions. Massed groups of ships in the harbor, 30 in all. But the surrounding waters are too shallow to safely dive. Tonight, the Barb will make a surface attack, exposed to the eyes of the enemy. These volunteers sought a chance to make a difference. This was that chance. Bold action now could save countless lives later. Shorten the war. This is their moment. Flucky gives the order. Four torpedoes discharge from the bow. They race toward rows of ships moored. Perfect targets. Flucky orders a hard turnabout. Barb's stern now points toward the harbor. Four more torpedoes launch from the stern tubes. A munitions-laden cargo ship detonates. The harbor lights up. A patrol boat spots Barb on the surface. Flucky orders them all ahead full. He dodges them, chooses a path through an uncharted region on their map. It's still too shallow to dive to safety. Search planes give chase. For the next hour, they sail on the surface at 150% of their engine's rated capacity. They override safety shutoffs and risk a total breakdown. They set a speed record for submarines, 23 and a half knots. At last, they've reached deep waters. They submerge. Commander Flucky makes a simple note in his log. January 23rd, 1945. 6.35 a.m. Life begins at 40 fathoms. Flucky and his crew return to Pearl Harbor in February 1945. They are met with a hero's welcome. One month later, he received the Medal of Honor for his leadership and courage. He later said that his proudest achievement was not a single member of his crew was wounded in combat. In 1946, another Medal of Honor was presented at the White House to honor the last patrol of the USS Tang. There to receive it was Richard O'Kane. 
he had been washed from the bridge of the sinking Tang. Five men out of 80 survived the sinking. A passing Japanese ship took them captive. The rest of the war they spent in a prison camp, endured torture and disease. Liberation came at the war's end in September 1945. 16,000 submariners served in the war. 23%, more than 3,000, died. The highest casualty rate of any service branch in the American military. But their impact is clear. In the course of the war, submarines sank 30% of the Japanese Navy and strangled Japan's war economy. Today's nuclear-powered submarines play a crucial role in projecting power and protecting the sea's shipping lanes. As new Virginia and Columbia-class submarines are being built, familiar names return to service. Submarines named Tang and Barb will sail again, a tribute to those storied submarines and the brave crews who helped win the war in the Pacific, and their captains, Richard O'Kane and Eugene Flucky whose courage and leadership in those distant waters went above and beyond the call of duty. <laughs>